just try to come up with a balance that not only serves everybody in the world around me, you know, from my clients to my kids, obviously, and my wife, and, you know, then going work to, to going to work and being a great employee and then coming home. And before I sit down, can we clean under this couch? Can you do the dish? Can you run the trash out? Can you do the changes? I mean, it, it's yeah. just shit going on. So for me, um, I make sure everybody get their peace, but sometimes I don't give myself enough. enough. going on family welcome to another episode of the fatherhood village podcast the official home for proud fathers and mentors i'm dale holloway with the brother kev hick we are your tfv hosts kev what's happening brother how's life oh man life is wonderful no complaints whatsoever man how's you how's you (laughs) 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 you want extra ebonics on it right there how's you (laughs) <laughs> uh, I'm well, man. I'm well. Um, a, a, a lot of listeners pray, probably didn't even know. Or I didn't even really make it too public, but I, I got caught slipping. Got that COVID, man. Got it all up in me. But uh, that this was uh, almost three weeks ago, so uh, it was rough for about 24 hours, man. But uh, luckily, as as I uh, as my immune system responded, I was able to kind of knock it out within, like I said, a day or two. Um, and the symptoms kind of lingered a little bit. I actually lost my sense of taste and smell for about three days before I started to regain it. But, um, you know, recovered. Uh, luckily, I didn't compromise the family. Everyone tested negative. Um, so that's a good sign. I'm, I'm, I'm glad uh, as far as the silver lining, that, that, that was uh, all of it right there. But, but yeah, man, full strength, full, full health. Like you said, you see the beer coming in. I got some time away from work. Uh, just trying to stay productive, man. But other than that, all is good. All is well. I can dig it. I'm glad you over that shit because I was spending better hang up on your ass. <laughs> <laughs> that COVID, man. It, it's contagious as they say that shit is. I was about to hang up on your it come, ass. Yeah, right it come through the airways, man. Shit. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, man, trying to get back into the routine and working out and just keeping uh, the physical, uh, you know, part of the, the regimen together and you know, make sure, like I said, it could strike again. This thing ain't going nowhere no time soon. And depending on where you uh, you put yourself, you're around certain individuals at work that's careless, uh, that's not, you know, following protocol and certain guidances, man, you you exposed again. So, um, you know, just, just trying to keep the immune system boosted at all times, working out, you know, doing my part. So, all right, Dale. So before we continue, I want to give a shout out to our sponsors. Let's get checked. Listen, fellas, low testosterone can cause muscle loss, erectile dysfunction, reduce sex drive, fatigue, obesity, and symptoms of depression. So if you're having trouble making gains at the gym, putting it down in the bedroom, maintaining adequate energy levels, staying lean, having mood issues, you could in fact have low testosterone. I can say from experience that Let's Get Checked makes getting tested easy with next day delivery. You just receive your test, send it off, and get your results in two to five days. Get your testosterone levels checked today at trylgc.com forward slash TFV. Again, that's trylgc.com forward slash TFV. The coupon code TFV gets you 30% off in the checkout. As men and as leaders, we got to be fully functional out here. The array of home health test kits available from Let's Get Checked makes staying on top of your health easy. So check it out, guys. The link's in the description. Now let's get back into this conversation. But yeah, man, without further ado, uh, family, thank you for spending a little time with us. Today, we're talking about fathers taking a break, a time out. Um, you know, being a full-time active father becomes taxing. You know, we getting up, going to work, dealing with the cats at work, you know, frustrations that come along with all that, uh, the commute, 
getting home, you got housework to do, and you got stuff waiting on you, um, helping the kids with homework, changing yeah. diapers, you know, and, and, and things are hectic, especially those that are uh, single parent fathers. And, um, you know, it comes in times where, man, that, that stress kicks in and you snapping and you aggressive, you, you know, things are boiling up, man. And that break is necessary, but you know, when, when do you take that break? How long do you take the break? You know, is it scheduled? Is it sporadic? We're going to touch on all that, man. So the first, the first topic, or excuse me, the first bullet of this topic, do you schedule this, this compensation time, this, this downtime, uh, or is it more sporadic? Do you kind of just catch these pockets of time when, when they arise, do you kind of seize the moment or is it kind of something you kind of construct and kind of build around a certain schedule? Um, and then secondly, do your children deserve a break? Do they need a little, you know, time out from you? Are you acting crazy and wild and now they need to, man, let me go over grandma's, you know what I'm saying? Let me get away from all this static. Um, you know, is, is that healthy for the kids? So, uh, Without further ado, let's get into the first one. Do you schedule this compensation time or is it kind of sporadic for you, Kev? Oh man, um, I'm the absolute worst at this. Um, <laughs> I find that I always sacrifice for everybody and everything around me, but I'm the last person on the list, man. And um, you know, while it might seem honorable to fall on your sword, man, it doesn't do anybody any good when you don't take care of yourself. So this has been a process for me this year, learning how to adjust, you know, um, my new projects with my older projects, with my job, with my YouTube channel, with the businesses that I run based on, you know, the services I provide women and just try to come up with a balance that not only serves everybody in the world around me, you know, from my clients to my kids, obviously, and my wife, and, you know, then going work to, to going to work and being a great employee and then coming home. And before I sit down, can we clean under this couch? Can you do the dish? Can you run the trash out? Can you do the changes? I mean, it, it's yeah. just shit going on. So for me, um, I make sure everybody get their peace, but sometimes I don't leave myself enough. Um, it's not consistent. Most of the time, even my subscribers will be like, Kev, please take care of yourself. Yeah. <laughs> you know, cause they just assume they see how busy I am. They see how present I am. And they just assume like, Hey, you might need some time off because we see how generous you are, you know, we're giving to yourself. And I, I think that that's my, my Achilles heel and it's something that I'm working on, but I've gotten a grip of it and I've gotten a lot better of it, uh, better at it recently. Um, but I got a lot of projects going on right now. I got a lot of things I got to get done. So I find myself slipping back into it. So I've been waking up early, making sure I get that time to myself. Uh, and I've been using that. My, my thing that I like to do is go to the gym, but I can't go to the gym because I don't want to risk bringing anything back to the house at the moment. But I do have a full gym in my basement. I got a boxing gym in my basement. Uh, like I said, we talk about being war ready, being in physical uh, shape been right. prepared. I got a boxing gym in my basement that I use um, from time to time. And uh, I often, I also got the full workout gym. I got a half rack, squats, free weights, Smith machine. I got a T-ball row set up in my basement. I got everything. So um, in the morning I wake up and I get that, that hour or to at least 30 minutes, but usually about an hour to work out, get my mind right, enjoy the quiet because that's what I like to do. Enjoy the quiet. And so um, that's my routine is just waking up early and starting my day in a time where it won't affect anyone else who might need me because they're still asleep. I just beat everybody to life, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Now that's key. That's definitely the first step. Just first of all, creating a schedule that, that regimen and staying with it, you know, making it a regular part of your life. And if you got to, you know, subtract some hours from your sleep, and maybe catch up on it on the weekend, you know, you got to make it work for yourself. Uh, like, it's, <laughs> I, I don't, I wish I could, I wish I had more time. Like, I don't, um, I don't really take time from sleep though. Uh, I generally just go to bed a little bit earlier, right? So 11 o'clock for me I, is great for waking up at six o'clock. I'm not okay. one who can sleep eight hours. Like my body doesn't need eight, eight hours. It rejects eight hours. If I get seven hours, I wake up with a headache and a neck ache. Oh, so, Six and a half hours is all I can do anyway and be comfortable okay. and present. Otherwise, I'm groggy and I'm slow. 
but six and a half hours is my sweet spot. So that gives me just enough time to shake the cobwebs off and get in the gym, man. So um, I don't have to take too much away from sleep either because I don't need a lot of sleep. Uh, you know, thank the Lord. I think that my body will adjust in old age, though. Yeah, all right. It'll catch up with vision. <laughs> <laughs> Father time will find you, boy. Um, mm -hmm. But no, that's important. Um, you know, to maintain that, that schedule as, as we spoke of, because that that mental, you know, exhaustion will set in, the, the physical fatigue from the day to day. Like I said, you, you do the workout thing that's pretty daily, pretty regularly. Um, you know, you, you become a little, you know, uneasy, uh, perturbed, you know, with, with so much, so many inner workings of life itself. And then like I said, having yeah. multiple children, you have to fulfill your duties as a husband as well. Um, so like I said, this, this break has to be included somewhere. And yeah. for myself, um, like you said, it's not really scheduled. Um, most of the times, normally the scheduling comes from the wife. And if we're doing something together, then she kind of like, okay, we're going to have the kids, you know, being watched over here. There's a babysitter I set up, whatever, whatever. When we were at, in Ohio, you know, they would be at my parents or they'd be with her parents, grandparents, whatever, just for a short uh, amount of time for us to do whatever, you know, she planned for us to do with it. It'd be something simple. Like, you know, as, as parents, as adults, we just need simple time away. Like we ain't got to do a whole lot of extravagant stuff, dinner, movie, um, you know, not too far from that. But uh, like I said, you, you kind of get burnt on things and yeah. you know, other frustrations set in. Like I said, you got side hustles you're dealing with. So all these things pulling at you and you still want to. No, I was, I was going to say, I didn't mean to jump in, but uh, <laughs> you, you, you just reminded me of something that I should probably share with people. Um, every once in a while, usually after a big project, me or my wife, we take turns because we have two young kids. So one of us have to be home. We can't take vacations and leave the babies with somebody because they don't, they don't really mess with other people. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I was just about to hit on that too. Go yeah. ahead. Yeah, yeah. But every every so often, like I got a big project that I'm doing right now. My wife has already pre-scheduled me a two-day hotel stay by myself. Last mm. weekend or the week before last, she, she stayed at the local hotel for two days. A month ago, I stayed at the, a local hotel for two days because I was trying to write that book and I'm still uh, completing my book. So we do do retreats like that where we take time off from the parental responsibilities and the spousal responsibilities we have for each other. And generally about once every three months, we both take turns taking a weekend to just be us, the individual and in our quiet at a hotel room. And we just do yeah. our thing. She takes the computer, she takes her, her stuff. She shops that she drops online. She, you know, shops in the local shopping center. She does what she wants. I usually write books prepare YouTube content, you know, podcast content, whatever I got to do to create and build. Cause that's what I like to do in my free time. But yeah. for the br brothers listening or the other people listening, that is something that uh, you should probably employ in your marriage if you haven't already, because it actually does help a lot, especially in decompression. Definitely. Now I'm glad you added that. Yeah. I remember you actually telling me that before. And I was like, I actually told Angel this to kind of give her a little nudge. Like, Hey, Check out what Kevin <laughs> Ashley doing, you know what I mean? <laughs> um, but yeah, equally as important. Um, and a lot of times I'm, you know, I'm subconsciously aware that when we do arrive home from work and we have these side business, these, high, these side hustles going on, when the kids see us come through that door, they think all that is, is over with. Like you're yeah. home, you with us, we doing what, what we want to do now. But then, like you said, when you have other endeavors ongoing and like I said, you have a whole separate life at home with the side hustles included. It's like, hey, I can't I'm, I'm here, but I ain't really here here yet. I still got other things that I have to attend to. So it's hard for kids, like especially kids that, that are our, uh, our kids age, like two and five and, and three and six and stuff like that. They're like, well, he just came home and now he's in the office or now he's. He's ducked off. I'm just like, well, you know, the kids kind of figuring like, okay, so when do I get my time? You know, when can mm -hmm. I expect that? 
because it's kind of like a tease <laughs> when they see the, you know, the garage door open and you pull it up, daddy's home. Oh, oh. yeah. But they then you got time. ex. Yeah, they so it's like when I'm trying to take a shit. <laughs> <laughs> they go take, they take it there. They don't give a damn what I Yeah, we well, ain't here with you. you. Yeah, yeah. Even like now, like, um, you know, doing this podcast with you right now, it's like, I gotta, I gotta have a separate time and space to do that. And, you know, obviously the, the wife helps with that. And so into going to this point, like you gotta make sure you're uh, reciprocating this, this favor. Cause the wife, she has her needs too. She needs her time. Like you said, you get to uh, every two weeks y'all switch off and stuff. And we may not actually go to a hotel and all that, at least for right now, but um, whatever space and whatever she needs individually, I have to serve her that I have to give her that because I know I need that. Um, right. You know, doing my, my freelance graphic art, you know, I got the clothing brand stuff that comes home from work. We doing a podcast thing here. So it's, it's all kind of stuff. And, I, and like, she gave me a calendar. So I'm writing like a, a literal calendar that's, that's in the office that's hanging up and I have to write out things for the week and things may change. You know, you might have to divert a little bit. Um, but as long as she's on the, on the page with you and like, you know, you make those things aware, um, you know, it helps a lot, but yeah, sometimes like I need a break just to do more shit. But then in reality, sometimes the break you need is to not do anything. Yeah, You know, you just need that, that break to have that peace, that quiet, you know, uh, just to be in your own solitude, gather your thoughts and just, you know, be one with yourself at that time, you mm -hmm. know? Cause I know for myself, it's hard for me to just clear my mind and just meditate. I, I constantly got shit running through here in my head like okay mm -hmm. like one little thing can trigger a whole array of thoughts and then i'm just down a rabbit hole so um before we hit to the next the next point what are some of the ways you use your time alone and in, in the breaks that ashley uh provides for you um i, I think you what you just said you, uh, meditating but for me, meditation is different. So there are a lot of different forms of meditation, right? Um, offhand, I can think of about nine, um, at least in, in function, not in, in title or name. But the, the form of meditation I do is not one where you have to think of a blank room or a white door closing or anything like that. Meditation is anything that you give your mind's time to, right? Mm -hmm. Anything you give your thought power to in your thought life, that's meditation. You can meditate about everything that's going on in the world and how everything's going bad and how it's all doom and gloom. And that's meditation. You're ushering in an emotion and a physical response um, from those thoughts, right? Meditation for me being active is waking up every day, choosing my thoughts, choosing my intention for the day, choosing the mood I will take, right? So when I get my time, um, when I have my peace, I prefer to meditate on uh, one or two things or one of three things, um, gratitude, right? Uh, ambition um, or prosperity. Um, and, and prosperity for me is different than ambition, right? Prosperity okay. for me is, is how I prosper my family, like the effect of my work. The outcome, right? yeah, yeah. The outcome. And uh, ambition is the planning, the, the, the masterminding of it all, right? Mm. Um, or I focus my day on gratitude. Gratitude is a very powerful emotion. So it pulls you into a place of peace and tranquility because you're remembering the things you overcame, the things you've done, the things you didn't know you would make it through and seeing where you are now. And to be, to be as thankful as you were in those moments, to usher in that emotion um, and then sit into, in, into the quiet is, is just a wonderful feeling, right? So mm. I use, I use a emotion, emotional manipulation in a way to, to, um, to, to employ and, and be a conduit to my meditation uh, coming to pass. So I don't think of a white room. I think of the things I'm most grateful for. I think of my, my sons and my wife being healthy, you know, remembering when they were not. I think of, you know, being poor and, and you know, my finances now. Um, or I would think about my ambitions, all of the master plans that I have. I start to detail my processes, how to get from step one, step two, step three. Now that excites the shit out of me. Sometimes ambition is an anxiety inducer for some people. Yeah. But for me, it wakes me up. It makes me feel powerful and unstoppable. Yeah. So ambition is a great meditation tool because I can't be upset and be planning. That's not how I move. <laughs> I, I plan from a, a place of excitement, right? So in glee. 
and then my prosperity, like I said, the, the plan that I want to have, the vision I have for my family, the, the businesses I want to build for my children, the, the inheritances I want to leave them, the things I want to give them, the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding I want them to develop from my fatherhood, right? What I leave, it, what I leave it with them and what I impart with them uh, or in them, I'm sorry. <clears throat> All of those things are, are, are things I meditate on. So don't focus so much on the white room or clearing your mind. Focus on putting the appropriate things in your mind because they are so infectious that you won't, you won't stop thinking about them because they're the things you love the most. Yeah, yeah, that level of uh, subconscious. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Got you, got you. It was one other thing I thought of um, prior to getting to this next talking point. Um, I know, I know, we kind of spoke about this before, as, as far as being deserving. So yeah. being deserving of this time off, because we both know there's a there's a difference between getting a break and just straight up neglecting your kids. You know what I'm saying? Right, like you right. have a job, you have a ultimate responsibility. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You can't just, because we both know parents or single parents, whoever, you know, they just drop the kids off to whomever, their yeah. family, friends, whoever it may be, and just dip out, spend time how they want to, like more often than necessary or you know what I mean? Like they 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 stretch that a little too far. Yeah. Um, so yeah, like you said, we <laughs> right, right. And it's and it's kind of like, um, are we doing, you know, the most that we possibly can during that time? Like have we have we, you know, measured what we're doing uh in, in, in the form of success? Like what are we building to uh, you know, develop a great surrounding and environment for our kids at the house. Um, is it peaceful? Um, or, or you have too many distractions, you know, is, is it too many barriers between you and, and building that strong connection with your kids uh, before you dipping out and enjoying yourself? You going to the club, you having, you know what I'm saying? You got all these little things that you doing socially, but you're not really giving too much to your children or what they need are you honoring what they need and and being there first so um you know that a lot of time like i said i gotta make sure i'm giving to them more than i'm trying to uh give to myself and like I, said, I know you don't have any problem with with you know giving your all to your family and stuff but i know sometimes it's kind of like you know i want to go do this or i want a time I want time to go watch the, the the game or I want time to go hoop or whatever, you know, thing you do in your leisure time. Is it like, okay, am I doing too much of that and not enough of what's needed of me as a father or yeah. things I'm overlooking that my child needs? Have, have I played enough with them? Have I, you know, given an hour or two, we just, you know, kicking it the way they want to kick it. Not just right. what I feel is necessary at the time. Um, so yeah, did, did you want to kind of add to that? Yeah, man, that's a, that's, that's a deep thing, man. You know, I don't have, I don't have a thing where I'm social and I want a club or I want to go outside. You know me, man. I'm, I'm right. like MJ, bro. I just do my thing. <laughs> I'm pay, I'm calm. I'm cool. I, I, I'm boring. I'm predictable. I'm all those things, right? I don't need the excitement because I really have to be a respecter of the person around me. Like I have to respect every mind around me to want to be surrounded. And you can't necessarily fit that many people in the room for me. It ain't going to be a hundred people I respect at the club. You know what I'm saying? So for me, I'm so funny acting sometimes and so antisocial that I, that's not how I'm going to move. What I want to do is stay at home and not be bothered. Right. And that just ain't going to happen. Right. Somebody's yeah, yeah. crawling on me. <laughs> you know, um, but you're right, man. Sometimes when you give your time to your family, it's very easy to love people as you would want to be loved. Um, but you have to love people in the way they receive love. And so my son, for instance, he's, he's six. He's got this incredible hawk mask. <laughs> and, this, and this mask has a grimace on it. Like this mask is looking mean, right? We got the same yeah. one, bro. Yeah, he, right? <laughs> so the, the mask looking crazy. And uh, you put the mask on. And we, we all play the game. The whole house plays the game where we, you put the mask on and now you chase people around the house, beating them up, right? Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I used to imagine myself when, before I had kids to be this big, playful, you know, care bear type of dad. Man, I take myself kind of serious these days. So it's very difficult for me to snap into the Incredible Hawk and play. 
But, you know, every time he come up to me with that mask, he said, Danny, be Hawk. I'm like, ah, yeah, all right. <laughs> right, and I, right. And I do it because that's the way he receives love. When he thinks back on his childhood, he's not going to think, man, my daddy provided for me and my daddy was responsible. He built a legacy. I mean, he'll think about that as an adult, but when he thinks about the fun and the experience of his childhood, he's either going to remember daddy played or daddy did. Daddy was nice or daddy wasn't. Daddy was affectionate or daddy wasn't. Daddy cared or daddy didn't. Daddy was in the room or daddy was not. Daddy was gone or daddy was here. That's what he's going to remember. So you're not doing your job, just being there. You have to also, again, love them in a way they receive it. And my son receives it by participation. He needs your participation for everything. Yeah. That's how you receive it. It's the most exhausting <laughs> of way, way for it me. <laughs> but, you know. Before I tell him no with the hawk mask, uh, and sometimes I tell him no, and he's very persistent. So you know you get at least one no, and he's gonna still gonna come back. Yeah. But I remember who I'm talking to and what he needs, and I say, you know what the hell with it? Why I don't care if I gotta be stupid, if I gotta be silly, let me go on and be this hawk. You know what I'm right. saying? And I chase right. him around, and I say, listen, I'm gonna do this five times now. I've got five. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I ain't yeah. been to ch- I ain't gotta be hawk all day. I need a pre workout for that shit. Right. But hey, they love it. They, they like you see it, it on their face and you, you know what I'm saying? It's just <laughs> whatever thoughts you had before you threw that mask on, they have evaporated uh, at least temporarily during that time. But yeah, that's that's important. That's great, man. Like he's saying, he got about four or five masks. He yeah. got the capes, you know what I mean? Like <laughs> we just posted a picture on uh, on Instagram yeah, and it. stuff. It, yeah, you know, yeah. He was Batman today. Yeah, he, he loved that, man. So like he said, you just, you, you have to, you know, remove your feelings and, and things of that nature and just, you know, uh, be a part of their world and, and enjoy them as, as much as you can during that, that time. Because like I said, as they grow up, you're going to wish you had that time back, you know? Yeah. So you have to embrace that. You have to cherish that moment, um, you know? And, and you have to, you know, you can look at it a couple of ways. Like, you know, they're always, you know, on you and wanting you to do this. Daddy play, daddy come downstairs. Daddy look, I want you to come down there and that. Or you can look at it like, well shit, they don't have to fuck with me. They don't have to always come around. They don't have to need me. They don't have to, you know, cause I'm sure it's it's probably parents out there that their kids really don't, they're not on them like that. You know what I'm saying? They don't really want their time and affection. And you know, the the energy that they're giving off kids kind of want to avoid that. So it's good that, you know, they're attracted lesson. to you, they gravitate gravitate to you. Yeah, yeah. So you gotta, yeah. you know, no matter what's going on, like even if you gotta kind of squeeze it into a little pocket of time, you gotta get that to them. You know, it's a saying? it's a wonderful inconvenience to have. Um, right. It's a blessing and convenience to have. You know, when I come home, I don't have time to like I said, I I don't have time to take a shit. But uh, mm-hmm. my son finds out I'm in the bathroom. He's busting in the bathroom. <laughs> it's all over. <laughs> trying to use his little urinal just so he can be in the bathroom at the same time I'm in the bathroom. Facts. You know, so like when Facts. I come in the house, when I come in the house, man, I don't have three seconds before somebody runs up to me, daddy, 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 you know what I'm saying? And you know mm-hmm. what? It's the best part of my day. Yeah. You're telling me is, oh God, it's the most amazing feeling to just be that important. And one day I hope to be as great as he thinks I am. One day yeah. I want to be the man that he assumes that I am, right? And yes, uh, I'm on I'm on my way, but you know sometimes they love you in a way that you don't even deserve. You know, <laughs> yeah. I, maybe yesterday I didn't play well, or you know I I was a little impatient, or you know, I said, hey man, get, shut your eyes out. You know, <laughs> <laughs> Some, right. sometimes you be on a different mood. You daddy coming in serious and messing up the playtime. You know what I'm saying? And but, usually that next day you on a clean slate. Like yeah. That. Today is totally different care. from yesterday. Yeah, like yeah, they, they got a short memory span. Brand new uh, love, man. So, uh, yeah. you know, I really appreciate that. So I just try to love them in a way that they need to be loved and, and try to take myself out of it. But again, it's hard and they will remind you. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yes, sir. But yeah, before we wrap up this last point, do your children deserve a break from you? Is that a thing? <laughs> you know what I mean? Or, or you know, has, has, has it become a point where, you know, either the kids may explicitly say that they want to be somewhere else or they want to, you know, do things outside of the house without you, you know what I mean? Or is it something that you kind of have to give to them uh, for them to experience on their own, kind of like nudge them and, hey, won't you, you know what I mean, to see how it is, how they, how they, 
in our if they are receptive to it you know is, is the break necessary uh for you to give them or is it kind of like you know wait until they need it before you know it's kind of deemed important i think um my family in particular you know my sons they are actually very good at taking time for themselves you know like my youngest son he he's he's uh, mildly autistic so he's a little bit antisocial from time to time now he is extremely, extremely loving, extremely affectionate, um, extremely engaged. Um, he actually doesn't match up with a lot of the autism spectrum, you know, supposed symptoms, you know, so it's easy to forget sometimes, but what he does do when he, when he's overstimulated or when he, um, is just tired of people's stuff, he'll, he'll go into our bedroom and watch his little tablet and he'll kind of try to spend the day by himself and we can catch it in the morning how you know what his demeanor is he just wants to spend the day by himself mm. my six-year-old my six-year-old is loud in your face always jumping on the ground just i mean he's he's a six-year-old uh, yeah. very energetic uh mildly mild attention span having a six-year-old but you know what about it once every nine days he don't want to be bothered by no damn body and he will, <laughs> He will steal that time back. He'll just go upstairs and just be quiet or he'll go in our bedroom and he'll just kind of chill because it's calm and it's peaceful and it's different in there, right? It's a different air. And he'll just go in our bedroom and sit and he don't want to be bothered. He don't want to talk. <laughs> nice. Sometimes we look at the room, room and he's taking a nap in our bed. It's just, it's just different, you know? So both of my sons kind of take it when they need it. And um, I, I would expect that they do need time from me because I'm, I'm very serious. You know, and uh, I'm I will, I'm always on something. I'm always building. I'm always focused on something. When I'm not in play mode, obviously, what I find that is that, you know, sometimes my demeanor doesn't match his demeanor. He's trying to have the funnest time in the world, and here and here I come. Like, listen, this business, we we just it's time to work. It's time to do this and so. You know what I'm saying? Mm. He like, Arr. so I can be All a fun right. vac. I remember my old roommate used to call me the fun vac. Uh, shit gets like serious when I'm walking out the room. room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's not, you know, that's not necessarily true, but that when it's serious time, damn it, it's serious time. And uh, I think that my son has enough of my serious time for the, for a few days and he'll go take a couple of days. And maybe it's not me, but also my wife, you know, she gets tired of him running around, jumping around. He gets tired of telling, being told to be quiet, sit down. Da, 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 <laughs> he, so he'll take some time, you know, and I think that uh, it's important that, you know, and, and it's imp impressive that he understands that he needs that decompression time and he actually does it um, and gives us the time too because it's quiet when he's like that. But right. Uh, right. yeah, that's what they do, man. They take their own time. Yeah. Um, yeah, similar similar with, with our children. Our youngest, he's two and a half. He doesn't spend a whole lot of time alone. Like if you, you know, hand him a tablet or you know, give, put him in his playroom you know, surrounded by toys. It's a short little expiration date, like, or or time limit. Like, hey, he'll, go, he'll give you about 10, 15 ISO. After that, he coming upstairs. Daddy, what you doing? Daddy, put this cape on. <laughs> Daddy, you be Hulk. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, it's that time. So, and then with, with Shard, they are oldest. She'll be five uh, in about two weeks. Um, she she likes the interaction because I think it's it's innate, but subsequently I think because she doesn't spend a whole lot of time with other children or um we don't have the the play dates as often um she's used to just being around us. And I think if she had um more outlets like she did she had ballet for a while but then like I said COVID kind of shut everything down um so I think if she had more things going on outside the house she would kind of be more gravitated to that and kind of want to do more extracurriculars and because now she feel like well I gotta fuck with y'all because it ain't a whole lot going right. on my options right. are limited um always another thing I was going to bring up um naps just just to have a little other pocket of time to kind of touch on that again real quick. So we implemented that a while back, right? So when, uh, so we never really, it never really ended. Like we had that time in the beginning because, you know, very early in their development stages, that's, that's a necessity. So 
we just never really ended it. So it is it has been continual. And now that she like I said, she's five, she know she'll give us about an hour. She actually still kind of nods off, goes to sleep, probably 90, 90, 95 percent of the time she gets it. And then he he can he can be asleep for two hours if you let him. Um, so that's time that we use to obviously get some things done. If the wife needs to take a nap, if I need to make a run to where I need to go outside the house, cut the grass, whatever it needs to happen, we try to fit that in, in that, in that, in that nap time, the duration of that. So, um, but like I said, it's, it's tough sometimes. Sometimes they don't, they don't want to lay down and you wasting time just trying to get them down for their nap. You know what I mean? So sometimes we just got to pull an audible and, and do other things, maybe put them to bed a little sooner. But, um, but nah, you, you, you brought up a good point, man. I think, uh, I think kids kind of like will kind of tell you, you'll see the signs that, you know, Hey, let me, I'm gonna duck off over here. You know what I mean? If y'all leave me alone, we all going to be peaceful. Um, you know, and that's good. That's good. Like I said, they, they picked, you know, a space that they feel comfortable, um, you know, to kind of do things on their own. Like I said, you see, you see the independency starting to arise. Um, you know, and like I said, it's helpful. They, they're quiet, they're not asking for a whole lot. You can just give them a little applesauce pack, a little water, a little something. You keep them nice and, and, and right, and then hands off for a little while for as long as they need it. Um, and, they, and they get back to you once once all that is, uh, is all over with. But but yeah, man, uh, I think this was an excellent topic. I think uh, a lot of you listeners out there uh, will have a lot to to think about, a lot to add on to this conversation. But but yeah, man, we wanted to leave you with that. Again, follow us, uh, share our content if if you're feeling, you know, uh, inclined to do so. Support us as you all continue to do. Uh, we appreciate it all. We're grateful for for all of it. Um, like I said, we'll, we'll hit you again next week with another topic. Um, we'll try to get on IG soon on, on the live tip. Um, you know, we ain't really scheduled a date, but we'll definitely throw it out there uh, when everything lines up and kind of interact with you guys, see what you guys thinking. So, but yeah, man, that was a good one. Any, any last words, Kev, before we jump off here? Oh, man. Take your time if you're a father and you're busy, man. Take your time. Don't take it out on nobody, man. Just go take your time. Like I said, my, my job be like, look, you got the time, use it. Don't come in here acting crazy. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And yeah. I kind of take I kind of take that uh, advice even at home, man. You know, don't come in here acting crazy, screwing up the mood, messing up the vibe, creating unhappy vibes and, uh, you know, negative environments, man. Just go do what you got to do to get your peace. But remember that you got responsibilities. It ain't all about leisure. You got to do the work. Why? Right. Right. That's facts. That's facts, man. Hey, family, we appreciate you sharing time with us. As always, it's your boy, Dale Holloway. That's Kev Hick. Peace and love. Peace and love.